Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Boland Husky 600 restoration. If you haven't already watched part one, pause this one, go back and watch it. We've got some nice little funny bits in there. We get the engine running, we get all the gears working on the gearbox, and we're really happy at what stage we're now at with regards to getting this little pup restored. So you're yeah, really happy. In this episode, we're going to strip apart, to get, take the bonnet off, take the engine out, take all the easy bits off. And so we've got a pile of bits and pieces that we can send off to the shop blasters to be shop blasted and to be powder coated in the beautiful gold that she deserves to be. So we're gonna whiz through that, we're gonna speed up some bits and see how we get on. Right, happy watching. So what we found on the side of the engine, obviously is the big old starter motor that's on the side, but there's a belt that runs from the starter motor up round on the main pulley there where obviously a recall starter would be. But the belt has started to come off and it's probably seconds away from falling off. So if we show you around on this side, as you'll see here, the belt for one is turned upside down and on this top pulley, up through there, it's come out of the pulley recess where it's meant to be and it's just balancing on the top of the pulley. But what we have seen is that this pulley here is not square and straight with that pulley. Obviously this has obviously been modified because of the replacement engine, but we need to work out why that's happening. And so if you're looking from this side, you'll see that that pulley is not in line with that one. So what we're going to need to do is adjust this because it's also not just in line, but it's also, instead of it being there, it's like that. So that's causing that belt to come try and pull off and keep twisting. So we're gonna take this belt off to start with for one so we can get to the bonnet catch. And literally, there we go. It wasn't very far away from coming off when we were driving it around in the first episode. There we go. So now we're gonna take off these bolts and get the bonnet off. And then probably start and then it will be next. Let's do that. Right, so let's get this bonnet off. Ah, it's gonna mouse. Love an arc lip. It's um, always a finger biter. Let's put that over there. So these little pups will come off. I don't have any, so I can't. We'll go and get some in a minute. A bit of lube. I like spraying a bit of lube around the place. This bonnet is probably just going to end up on the floor in a minute. The old hinge along here is just been pulled by doing what I'm doing and just leaning the bonnet down on it. So we're going to have to straighten that out. But the actual hinge bit itself looks quite straight. So, and then we're going to have to re weld that on there. Me with a welder. It's all right. It's okay. Just expect some bird splat. We're also going to, we're going to put that back in. So where they fitted that around the top of the old exhaust and air filter, they obviously had to cut this up to allow to fit that in. We're going to try and do something to that so that we can put this back down to where it's meant to be and weld that back in and do a bit of beating on the old panel to um, try and get that looking like it should do again. Well, they're longer than I thought. I'm just going to put that somewhere safe. Let's see what we've got that old engine majobby. I'm going to take a start motor off now. Right, so we've taken the bonnet off, we've taken the start motor off, we've taken the battery tray out here. So now you can visually see in and around the engine, see where all the leads and the wires and the cables are going. Been a bit of a bodge here on the old um, switch. So back when I, in part one, when you see me trying to switch it on and off because there's a switch here on the front of the engine and there's a switch here on the side. So we'll do away with that just so there's only one switch, although you could work as a key, make it a bit harder for other people to start. But yeah, so that's what we've done. Um, we're now going to take off the, drain the fuel, drain the oil, drain all the fluids out of the, out of the mower, um, out of the engine. And um, so then we can just take the engine off as one big block. And then we can go down and have a little bit more of a look. See what we've got in there. It's dark. Very dark.
Right, we got a little bit more stripped down. We got down to the engine. Engine's loose. We can get it off. Just going to pump the oil out of it. It's one of my favourite jobs. Obviously, not none of this draining out oil. We've got one of these lovely oil pumps, which is cool. Just literally take your oil cap off, pump it, push, push it in the hole and pump it out. They don't last forever, but it's a lot, lot easier than it is trying to put a funnel underneath and drain it out or undo the bolt and then oil goes everywhere, all over your mower. So, pop the oil cap up there for a minute. It's literally pull out the hose, pop it in the bottom, pop it in the bottom. So, anyway, right, and then, whoa, pump it up, you got to pump it up, and hopefully, there we go, little pull, oil, pump through, he says, why is not working? That doesn't want to work. Take two on the oil sucker. They're great, love them. But, like I said, they don't last forever. So, I've been up to the workshop. Apparently we've got two. One that works, one that doesn't work. Shows you how much I'm in the workshop. Anyway, really good. All you do is pull out the pipe, pop it in the hole, and then, whoa, pump it up. You got to pump it up. and the oil goes up through the tube. As simple as that. And that's what it should have happened the first time. But no, there we go. What it is to be on camera, eh? But there we go. Keep pumping it up. In the workshop, we just leave that then for why we go on and change the spark plug or air filter or whatever, why that's sucking all of the um, old, beautiful black stuff that's been in the ground for many years and then been put in an engine. There we go. Pop that one up level there. No, he says. There we go. Put the engine level, make sure it gets everything. Pump all that through. So once the last little bit is out, we just wiggle the piping around there. You won't get out all of it, but you'll get out you know, most of it, rather than it going everywhere. Push it around, want to stop sucking. Could put another little pump. If I can hear it, can you hear it? Beautiful. There we go. Pop it in there, extra little pump. Suck up any residue in the bottom of the pipe, and there we go. So. Stop in a minute, it's fine. Anyway, engine's off. We should be able to literally go, <gasps> yay! Have an engine. A beautiful little Briggs & Stratton Industrial Plus. Engine from 1997. It's cool. On the inside of the bonnet, the original engine plate from the original engine has been put on the inside. Whether that was deliberate or not, I don't know. But yeah, we'll have a look at that later on in the videos. But there we go. This pulley here on the outside, this cover, and that is all original from the original engine as well, which I only just realised. It's all gold. So there we are. One engine out. Hang on, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put that oil cap back on. There we are. Cool. Put that to one side. We'll see you in part two, girl. Sorry, no, part three. This is part two. James, you're getting confused. Right. All right then, Sir Cameraman. Let's have a look in here. So here we have the inner workings of the machine and the clutch. So you've got the clutch pedal there, which push down, releases the idler pulley there, which lets the belt go slack. And then that one back up and in engages the belt to be able to drive the machine on this big pulley down here. The beautiful spring that I mentioned before, which is seeing better days, which pulls the clutch back up again, is not as tight as it should be. So we'll have to work out something there to be able to make that work. And it's being held on by a cable tie. But as the saying goes, if you can't fix it at cable ties, you're not using enough cable ties. So obviously, we haven't used enough cable ties. Anyway, we'll get that done. In on here, in the inside, there is some bushes gone on there. We'll have to work that up and down, which then joins on to the PTO clutch, which is there, which moves that one up and down, which obviously used to have another idler on. Oh, doesn't do anything at all. So that just, that's just floating in the wind. Oh, it's a little bit of spring now, though. But, yes, yeah, so that's all going to have to come off. We've got the push button starter in there and behind that one. And then I guess what you do is your regulator up there. And take all this off here, straighten it all up and go from there. So 
there we have it. Then you can go down here, steering down the bottom in there. I don't know if you can see that in there. Going down through, get all that taken apart. Let's see what's going on. So here we have the Bolens down to nothing left. It's just seats and a steering wheel. No, wheels and a steering wheel. And a bit of chassis and a gearbox and some linkages and stuff. But anyway, we've opened up the back, opened up the gearbox transmission, whatever you want to call it, and we've found that someone's been in here before, surprisingly enough. But we've got some nice little welds on here. But let's have a look here. Let's go inside. We've got We've got our gears going forward and back. As you can see here, someone's been in and made a bit of a selector on there, welded that one up. Which might have been the original, they just welded it back on maybe. Maybe it came off once. Who knows? But I don't really know what this does back here. Why it comes out so far there. So it'd be quite interesting if any of you guys know, any of you Bolands experts, I'd love to hear what's going on back here. Because I'm guessing, obviously, your worm gear there, which just goes on to your axle. And I believe, understand, there's a big brass gear in underneath that one, which that drives. But then you've got it coming out the back. Does that mean you can put a PTO back there? Does that mean you can put someone else on the back? Is that just literally access to be able to get it on and off? So it'd be interesting to find out if anyone's put anything on the back of that. So yeah, so anyway, coming from the front over here, transmission comes back through, spins around in there, and then you select your gear like so. And that, oh, there we go, so you've got drive now. That's going around. And then pull that back into neutral, nothing happens. So that should be reverse. Yeah, there we go, look, it's reverse. That's turning all that round. Back into neutral, nothing happens. And then that's first. There we are, there we go. Just trying to go forward, I promise. All right, so everything is pretty nice and tidy in there. But yeah, the oil level I think is too high. Before, like I said, the oil level should be on the old, um, below that plug there that I've got in my instruction manual, which I'm going to download. It does tell me how much needs to go in there. So we're going to drain that out in a minute, suck it out with our beautiful sucking machine and have a look in the bottom, see if we've got any nice iron filings and bits and pieces, make sure there's nothing else untoward that we weren't expecting in there. And then, yeah, what's everyone's opinion? Should I just hand paint the frame or should I strip that right down and have it all shot blast properly? Should I cut a corner or shouldn't I? Probably not. Anyway. See what your thoughts are, it'd be great to hear. Brown and sticky. So we drained the oil out of the back of the gearbox and I took the plug off the bottom just to get that, all of that out of the bottom. So, but we'll just have a look on camera a minute. I'll put a screwdriver in there and just see what's, but look at that, it's just literally like thick grease in that, in the bottom of that gearbox. So how deep that goes, how deep is the rabbit hole? Just a bit of manky, just manky old greasy, thick old oil. Look at it just dripping off. But yeah, look at that. Horrible old beep beep beep. There you go. Um, yeah, but it doesn't seem to be any filings in there. I'm sure there is somewhere. Yeah, there is. Yeah, nice bit of iron chunks. That's right, no, it's not chunks. It's just, um, it's just bits of filings. But we're gonna leave that there to drain overnight. Get it running. All that beautiful brownness. It's not exactly golden like the track was supposed to be. Cool, clean that up. We'll leave that overnight just to drain out, and then we'll give her a good flush through as well. And then we'll seal that over, seal the gearbox over on the top. We might use the plate, I don't know, but we've got to get all of this gubbins off, get all of that up through there. I think we're going to be lucky. I think, sensibly, there's no need to take the whole gearbox apart. Everything all looks fine in there. But we can take these bars off the side, all the way up through the main chassis, as it were. Take the wheels and the hubs and everything off, and then just maybe just hand paint the actual gearbox itself. So I think that'll suffice. 
I don't think there's any need to really take that right apart. So that's what we'll do. Leave that to drain overnight. Come back to it tomorrow. Take all the gubbins off. Seal that back over. Strip down some more. Hello again, guys. Right, so we are back in our little studio workshop. The oil has flowed out the back of the machine. Well, most of it, it's a little bit greasy, old rubbishy stuff in the bottom. But apparently, according to my editor, we are running over time on this episode. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna literally bang through this today, take it all apart, strip it down, speed it up, and I'll see you once it's all in a load of bits on the floor. So there we go. Let's dig in. So guys, the little Bolins is now into too many pieces and we can count. Well, there's still a lot more to do, but we've got it down to the bare bones of the machine. We've had a look at little bits and pieces, found out what's wrong, what's right. Learned a lot, I learned a very lot. There's lots of bits like this that I can't undo, but I think we've been pretty lucky with how everything has come apart. Nearly every single nut and bolt is just undone as if it was only put on there yesterday. So yeah, really fortunate. Half a dozen were a little bit of a pain, but pretty good, pretty good. So now we're gonna sort through all the tin work and what needs to be sent off to the shop blaster and powder coated and everything like that. So we're gonna sort through that, do a bit of tin work repair where we can. We're only gonna do it ourselves. We're not gonna to get too carried away with it, but at the same time, we want to make it look right. So we're gonna make it look right. Um, yeah, little bits like that, take that, gotta get that off, but we're gonna get up the workshop, put the old oxycetylene torch on it and pull that bearer, pull that pulley off because that's well on there that is. And uh, someone's been in there before with the Allen key and rounded it all off. So I'm gonna take up to the workshop and do that properly. Gearbox wise, I'm quite happy with everything in it. It all works, we've seen that already. So I'm not gonna take that apart. The gears in there, there's some gears which are obviously where people have been ramming it in first to reverse. You can see where the gear has started to wear off. But I'm not worried about that. There's plenty of meat left on the gear for when it does select in. So that's all fine. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean that down by hand and we're gonna paint all that by hand. So that's all fine. Engine wise, good old industrial plus. We are gonna, yeah, we're gonna take all the, all the bits and everything that holds on everything for the bowl and take all that off and get that shot glass and powder coated. The main cowling, what's your thoughts? I think I should probably paint it gold, but I really wanna probably keep it red because at the end of the day, it's not the original bit. A few people have asked us, are we going to keep this engine or are we gonna change it? We're gonna keep this engine. It works, it does a job, and it's two horsepower bigger. I know it's not original, but 
it's fine, it's gonna work. But over the weekend also, I'm gonna try and work out what we can do with the exhaust and the air filter housing. Air filter housing being the harder one to work out, but I've got some other scrap engines around, so what we can find, make that down there a little bit lower, so we can work that under that bonnet. Get the bonnet welded up, get all that beat out with the hammer a bit. I've already found some new tires, and they're in stock with our supplier, so we'll go down there and get them next week and whack them on after they've been powder coated. And yeah, that's cool. Guys, that is the end of part two. We will see you in part three. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, tweet us. I don't know, there's so many things. Just do whatever you can for us, it'd be great. But yeah, give us, give us, definitely subscribe to our channel. That's the main one at the moment. And we'll see how we go on. But see you in part three.